I sometimes think of the end of days and how the events described in the book of Revelation will unfold. While God has revealed the outline of these events, there are aspects of Revelation that remain uncertain, leaving us to wait and see how they will come to pass. One such aspect is the introduction of a one-world religion. I wonder, how could this even be possible? How will the Antichrist unite the entire world under one religion? The Bible makes it clear that in the last days there will be a one-world religion, but the mechanism of how this will happen is perplexing. To illustrate my point, consider politics in our nation today. The political landscape in our nation currently is incredibly divisive, nearly pushing us to the brink of civil war. The mere mention of Democrats or Republicans stirs strong emotions in people. Figures like Donald Trump and Joe Biden can evoke a wide range of reactions, sometimes even anger, just by appearing on screen. I know multiple families that have stopped speaking to each other because of differing political views. Politics is extraordinarily divisive, but I would argue that religion is just as, if not more, divisive. History attests to this. Wars have been fought over religion, and nations have risen and fallen because of it. Religion, much like politics, can deeply divide people, making the idea of a unified world religion even more astounding. Look into the history of wars, the First, Second, Third and Fourth Crusades. The Crusades, 1096 to 1291, were a series of military campaigns initiated by the Latin Church to reclaim Jerusalem and the Holy Land from Muslim rule, involving several major expeditions like the First and Third Crusades. The Thirty Years' War, 1618 to 1648 in Central Europe, began as a conflict between Catholic and Protestant states within the Holy Roman Empire but eventually drew in most of Europe, combining both religious and political motivations. The French Wars of Religion, 1562 to 1598, saw Catholics and Huguenots, French Calvinists, clashing in a series of conflicts marked by events like the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, ultimately leading to the Edict of Nantes, which granted religious tolerance to Huguenots. This is why I wonder how the Antichrist will achieve it, how he will unite the world under one religion. Uniting the world under a single religion is no small feat and has never been done before. For people to abandon the religions they hold near and dear to follow a new global religion is an immense challenge. However, one important aspect to remember about the last days, as described in the book of Revelation, is that it will be a time of great deception, unlike anything the world has ever seen. This theme of deception is a constant in eschatological writings, from Jesus speaking about the last days in Matthew 24 to the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation. These passages inform us of the scale and power of the deception in the last days. It is this unparalleled deception that will likely play a crucial role in ushering in the new world religion. The Antichrist will use this deception to convince people to abandon their deeply held beliefs and unite under a single religious system. Understanding the magnitude of this deception helps us grasp how such a monumental shift could occur in the end times. Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 to 6. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. 
and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. The concept of a one-world religion, as described in Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 to 18, is referred to as the Great Harlot, and is integral to the end-time scenario. As Christians, it is crucial to understand and recognize the dangers associated with this prophesied global religious system. In the Old Testament, the term harlot is frequently employed as a metaphor for those who pursue false religions. The actual identity and structure of this one-world religion have been subjects of debate among Bible commentators and theologians for centuries, leading to a variety of interpretations and theories. These interpretations propose the possibility of the one-world religion being Catholicism, Islam, the New Age movement, or even a religion that has yet to be conceived. An internet search will yield numerous other theories and possibilities. Since his papacy began in 2013, Pope Francis has undertaken significant efforts to foster relationships between different religious communities, with a notable focus on Muslims. His primary aim has been to promote peace, mutual understanding, and cooperation among diverse faith groups. A landmark event in this endeavor was the signing of the Document on Human Fraternity for World Peace and Living Together in 2019, which he co-authored with Sheikh Ahmed El Tayeb, the Grand Imam of Al-Ajar, during a visit to Abu Dhabi. This document emphasized the importance of interfaith dialogue and collaboration for global peace. One significant manifestation of these efforts is the Abrahamic Family House in Abu Dhabi. This initiative embodies the principles outlined in the Document on Human Fraternity, serving as a physical and symbolic representation of the commitment to fostering understanding and coexistence among the Abrahamic faiths, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. The Abrahamic Family House includes a church, a mosque, and a synagogue within one complex, each retaining its unique identity while promoting mutual respect and dialogue. This project exemplifies the strides being made towards greater religious unity and understanding, which is a step towards the formation of a one-world religion. Pope Francis has consistently advocated for interfaith dialogue and understanding. He has made numerous statements highlighting the commonalities between Christianity and Islam, particularly their shared belief in one God. These efforts are seen by some as indicative of a movement towards a more unified global religious framework, potentially aligning with the prophesied one world religion. As Christians, we must be vigilant and discerning in these times. The notion of a one world religion under the false prophet is a recurring theme in eschatological interpretations of Revelation. Potentially, this false religion will encompass a variety of existing religions, sects, and ideologies, or possibly form a new, singular entity. This religion is expected to be supported by miraculous signs and wonders, lending it an aura of legitimacy and divine approval. Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 to 18 provides several characteristics of this one-world religion, it will dominate all peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, suggesting that it will possess universal authority granted by the political and religious powers of the time. This universal authority will enable the one world religion to exert significant influence over global affairs, aligning various religious traditions under a singular unifying banner. The imagery of the great harlot seated on a scarlet beast adorned with blasphemous names further underscores the deceptive and idolatrous nature of this false religion. The harlot's opulence, described in terms of purple and scarlet clothing, gold, precious stones and pearls, symbolizes the seductive allure of this global religious system, drawing people away from true worship. Throughout history, various religious movements and leaders have been scrutinized in light of this prophecy, with some suggesting that contemporary efforts towards interfaith unity could be precursors to the prophesied one world religion. The actions and statements of religious leaders, particularly those of global influence like Pope Francis, are often examined for signs of alignment with this eschatological narrative. Could it be 
that the world is being ushered into a one-world religion and the world has not even noticed it. The establishment of the Abrahamic family house and the signing of the document on human fraternity are significant milestones in the ongoing efforts to foster global religious harmony. These initiatives, while aimed at promoting peace and understanding, are also steps towards the eventual realization of the one world religion described in Revelation. In addition to these efforts, the rise of secularism and the blending of religious and spiritual beliefs in the modern world contribute to the evolving landscape of global faith. The increasing acceptance of a pluralistic approach to spirituality, where individuals draw from multiple religious traditions, aligns with the idea of a unified global religion. This syncretism, while promoting tolerance and inclusivity, also paves the way for the potential emergence of a one-world religious system. It will be a time of great deception. We will get to a point where we can't even trust churches or ministers or even YouTube channels. There will be preachers who encourage their churches to take the mark of the beast. This might sound implausible to some, but history and current trends indicate otherwise. In times of great upheaval, people often look to their leaders for guidance, and religious leaders are no exception. However, not all leaders are trustworthy, and in the chaos and confusion of the end times, even pastors and preachers may be deceived or complicit in leading their flocks astray. Consider the influence that religious leaders have over their congregations. Many people place immense trust in their pastors, believing that they are guided by God and that their teachings are aligned with God's will. This trust can be exploited, especially in a time of global crisis where fear and uncertainty dominate. The mark of the beast, as described in Revelation, will be presented as a solution to some of the most pressing issues facing humanity. It might be framed as a necessary step for survival, security, or even unity. In such a scenario, preachers who are either deceived themselves or who have ulterior motives might encourage their congregations to take this mark, believing it to be in their best interest. The idea of preachers advocating for something as dire as the mark of the beast is not far-fetched when we examine the history of religious compromise and the susceptibility of humans to deception. Throughout history, there have been instances where religious leaders have led their followers into error. The various cults throughout history are examples of how religious authority can be misused. In the modern era, we see televangelists and prosperity gospel preachers who exploit their congregations for financial gain, often living lavish lifestyles while their followers struggle. These examples illustrate how religious leaders can be swayed by power, money and influence, leading them to make decisions that are contrary to true biblical teaching. I recently watched a documentary about a pastor who encouraged his congregants to take out business loans of $5,000, $20,000 and more to give to the church. If a pastor can convince people to go into significant debt for the church, do you think they wouldn't also advise their congregation to take the mark of the beast? Furthermore, the rise of false prophets and teachers is a sign of the end times that Jesus warned about in Matthew 24. He said that many false prophets will arise and deceive many. These false prophets will come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. They will perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. This warning indicates that the deception will be so great that even those who are knowledgeable and faithful could be led astray. In such an environment, it is not hard to imagine that some preachers will advocate for the mark of the beast, believing they are doing what is right. The last days are approaching, and while we do not fully know yet what this one religion will be, we are seeing signs of the formation of a one-world religion. We do not know exactly how the religion of the Antichrist will take shape in the last days, whether it will be a new religion entirely or a meshing together of existing religions. However, we do know it will be a time of great deception. We are increasingly living in a time where it is getting more difficult to tell the truth from a lie. The capabilities of artificial intelligence, AI, are advancing rapidly, 
and we are nearing a point where it will be challenging to believe what we see with our own eyes. AI technology can create hyper-realistic images, videos, and even voice recordings that can be indistinguishable from reality. Deepfake technology, for example, can produce videos of people saying and doing things they never actually said or did. This technology has the potential to be used for great deception, creating false narratives and misleading people on a massive scale. In such a world, the truth becomes a rare commodity and deception becomes the norm. We will get to a point where we can't even trust churches or ministers or even YouTube channels. You will be able to trust only your Bible. This is why it is so important to know your Bible for yourself. The Bible is the Word of God and it is the ultimate truth. In a world full of deception, the Bible remains a constant, unchanging source of truth and guidance. Knowing the scriptures and having a personal relationship with God will be crucial in navigating the deceptive landscape of the last days.